Hello, and welcome to Order Within, navigating a world of endless chaos and crisis. Many of us are experiencing inner turmoil, insecurity, anxiety, fears, and isolation. These feelings are only being amplified by news cycles, social media, and never-ending political madness. How do we find our way out of the chaos? How do we find strength within ourselves? How do we find meaning in a world driven by materialism? These questions and many more I aim to answer on the show. My goal is to be a trusted guide on your journey to selfhood. May you find what you seek. Hello and welcome everyone. I'm your host, Brandon Ward. Another episode of Order Within, episode number 27. Digging in here. It's crazy. My wife reminded me that last week's episode was episode 26. That's half of a year I've been doing this now. It's crazy. I love it. The process has been a ton of fun. So I'm excited to continue doing it. Hopefully you're enjoying it and finding value in the content. Today's episode, we're going to be talking about harnessing and embracing your inner animal. I think this is a tough one for a lot of us, for a lot of different reasons. And a big piece of that is the dual nature of life. We are conscious beings. We are aware. We can perceive. We have the ability to learn, to grow, to adapt, to modify, and to ask questions about life, to ponder our place in existence. That is what separates us from the majority of the animal kingdom, is our ability to reflect, to problem solve, to perceive ourselves and reality, and our place in reality. That's the spiritual aspect of us, our conscious aspect, the awareness piece to our existence. But we're also animal. We live in these bodies, we inhabit these bodies, and... The embodiment of our animal selves is simply a reality of the world that we live in. It's the vehicle that we have as conscious beings on earth. So our bodies, our animal nature, is something that we can embrace or deny, or a combination of those things. Most of us accept some aspects of it and deny other aspects of it. Our spiritual ideals are about living our best life. It's the high ideals that we aim towards. Compassion, consciousness, responsibility, purpose, integrity, awareness. It's our desire to leave the world a better place than what it was when we entered it. It's our vision for life. Our spiritual ideals are our vision for life. And that's how we that's how we define what really matters to us, the meaning behind all that we do. So our spiritual ideals are going to be the version of what we consider our best life, our destiny, if you will. It's our highest possible path forward. But our animal side can interfere with that if we're not careful. So understanding our animal side, how we engage with those with that aspect of ourself is crucial for us to live a fulfilling and successful life. Embracing it, understanding it, learning about what it means and what it is allows us to maximize our potential and cultivate power within ourselves. Denial of either one of those aspects of ourselves, spiritual or animal, creates problems, and for different reasons. But in this episode, we're, we're talking about the animal side and how it layers into how we live as humans. And embracing that and engaging with it directly is very important for us and how we manage that will dictate the experiences that we have, the outcomes that we create. In many ways, our animal side is the primal elements, 
the the deeper primal elements of humanity. It's the fierce, physical, sexual, unconscious ways. There's a lot of power in that. And, you know, we're, when we're thinking about our animal nature, we're looking at genetic histories, all this learning and knowledge that exists within our genes that have been passed on throughout generation after generation after generation of humans that we've acquired knowledge and that we're able to leverage each generation, each new generation from our experiences of the past. But the animal side is very, very powerful and it's prominent. And these are, you know, things that we think about food, air, using the bathroom, sex, birth, territorial battles. All of these aspects are components to our animal nature. And our discomfort or comfort with them can hinder or help us, depending on where we are. I think a good practice for this is to observe nature. Observe nature. Observe where we are. Observe how animals behave in the wild with one another. Most animals don't attack one another without warrant. It's often either... It's over territory, protecting their tribe, their family, their group, whatever that may be. Or it's over food. But other than that, animals don't really go around ruthlessly murdering one another. They're not overly controlling of resources. There's a very egalitarian approach that nature has when it deals with other species. I mean... If you observe, like one of the great things to do is watching nature channels and documentaries, you can really see that animal side and how we have to manage these pieces too. The urge to recreate, that's a powerful, instinctual movement that lives within all of us. The urge to protect and to defend our territory, that is a primal, powerful impulse that exists within us and in nature. The nurturing and protecting component of our young. Again, that is another aspect of nature that you look and you see everywhere around us. And for some, this may be hard to accept or not what they want to hear, but there's components of monogamy in nature, and there's also components of polygamy or or polyamory in nature. But there are actually a lot of species, animal species, that are monogamous, that mate for life. So that's another aspect that we can observe in the wild. But think about this. Look at a gorilla, a silverback gorilla. They are powerful animals, very powerful animals. They're often docile for the most part. They actually eat fruits, vegetables, and a very small amount of insects. They're they're omnivores. They're not carnivores. Even though they're these insanely strong, powerful animals that can quickly turn into ruthless, powerful beings when they are threatened, when their mates are threatened, when their family is threatened, when their territories are threatened, or when their inability to find food is threatened. So they may turn into Fierce defenders if someone is approaching their territory or their family or trying to hurt them and harm them or prevent them from having the things that they need. So you can see that the gorilla can be docile, peaceful, intelligent, and quickly transform into massively pounding its chest, swelling up big, and setting firm in its boundaries. This is all natural to the animal kingdom, and therefore natural to humanity. So understanding how nature operates and observing nature can allow us to embrace and accept those components of ourselves. We can be aware of how that can influence us. Our awareness allows us to maintain control to these urges and impulses and these instincts because they're powerful. They've been operating for millions of years. 
So we have to be aware of the influence that it has in our lives and how we have to navigate those things. So observing nature is a great way to go about doing that. And really, this is the dance of life, balancing our spiritual side with our animal side. Our animal nature seeks to push our growth upward and onward. So the way we manage and navigate our animal nature is something that can help us grow or hinder our growth. If we're denying our animal aspects and we're not acknowledging their existence, they will rule us subconsciously. This stuff happens a lot. And you see it happening in all of us. This is something that we all have to to navigate. But when you look at individuals who are deeply repressed, those movements are still happening, but they're happening under the surface, in the unknown, in that subconscious. And what can happen is there can be an explosion of this expression when we're not careful when we don't properly manage our animal instincts, our animal components, because that repression can be problematic. So by managing our animal nature, by acknowledging our animal nature, it actually pushes us to grow upward in a sense of it allows us to it allows us to dance with those impulses, those urges, and manage ourselves. So if we're feeling very sexually impulsive, that's a component that we need to be aware of and understanding the impact it can have on us. And if if that's the way we're feeling, then perhaps we need to look at our behaviors. We need to look at our habits. Like one prime example would be our porn usage. If we struggle with sexual impulsivity, then we need to look at Are we abusing porn? Is that influencing the way we're interacting and and influencing our animal nature in an unnatural way? That's just an example of that. There's the so the way we manage and navigate our impulses can help us grow by owning them, by becoming our own masters. And we do that by honoring them and accepting them and embracing them and hitting them head on. So that animal side can actually propel us forward. But again, awareness is key. And Having healthy expression of these instincts is very key too. It's completely natural to want to express ourselves sexually. It's completely natural to want to express ourselves physically. And depending on the makeup of who you are and the the genetic makeup and hormonal balance of your being, those aspects will be less or more depending on who you are. So being aware of those pulls, those pushes, those impulses, and your own cadence is critical. But finding that, if you find that you're a high energy person who has a lot of physical energy that you struggle to manage, so maybe you cre- it creates anxiety in your life. Well, finding physical expressions can be helpful to that. Maybe that's physical fitness. Maybe that's lifting weights. Maybe that's running. Maybe that's taking an M- MMA classes or boxing, biking, whatever. Finding movement. Movement is a powerful way to naturally express our instincts. Having a healthy sexual relationship with ourselves and a loving partner can be a great way to express that ancient sexual impulse, those urges that we have. Because ultimately, that sexual energy is the the energy of life. It's the eternal pull to create and expand and build. That's our our sexual energy pulls us forward into the world. So the, it's a great thing, but we have to manage it. We have to navigate it. So how we navigate that sexual energy, how we cultivate that sexual energy, how we cultivate that animal aspect will be the way we cultivate power in our lives. So true, pro- true power comes from this process, comes from embracing our animal side, that, those, that ancient energy, that fierce, deep primal element that exists within all of us that goes back way beyond our lives and that exists deeply within humanity here and what we're doing and how we live and that's the as a man that primal feeling cultivate that lean into it express it find the physical elements to to build on it and master it use it leverage it there are moments when we can use our anger, when we can use our fire. It's There are moments when anger and fierceness are appropriate when we're protecting the ones that we love or care about or defending the things that we believe in and standing up for what's right. 
There's power in this process. There's power in this energy. And so by cultivating it, by embracing it, by leaning into it, we can develop real power in our lives. And it's a power that we resonate, that resonates outward into the world, that we carry with us wherever we go. It's palpable. It's something that you can experience in yourself, and it's something that people will experience around you as you begin to cultivate it. But you have to explore it. And it's sometimes helpful to do this in safer environments and controlled environments or having a partner where you're with doing things like this. If you're cultivating, like as a man, maybe joining a men's group can help cultivate some of this energy. That's something that I'm exploring doing as well is how do we help cultivate this energy in other men? But it could be the same thing for women. If you want to cultivate this energy, if you're a woman, if you're a female, if you want to cultivate that with other women, you can do that. Or just people that you feel close to. But ultimately, this is a, a process. And it's something that we do over time. And we learn to cultivate that energy by engaging with it, by embracing it, by accepting what it is. And so there are a lot of ways sports, fitness, sex, food, building, nature, all of these things, getting out and doing physical things, grounding ourselves in the physical. That's why exercise and fitness and sports and sex and these things can do a great job at grounding us because it brings us back into our bodies. It pulls us back into the moment. So leaning in, to our bodies, leaning into the moment, leaning into these very physical acts. I mean, that could be something as simple as assembling something with your hands, cutting firewood, going out and walking through nature and feeling the trees, the leaves, the flowers, all the things around you, embracing the physical world around us. It's leaning into it. The animal world and the physical world are one. And so the more we can connect with that physicality in our own lives, the physical world around us, the more we can help cultivate this relationship in a healthy way. The other side, though, the denial of our instincts creates unconscious living. And most of us live this way, right? We're living very unconsciously regarding a lot of these things. We're denying our animal instincts. We want to ignore them, suppress them turn away from them. That's dangerous because ultimately that's where the shadow self lives. And the shadow self is all the things that we refuse to look at that's a part of who we are. Our animal instincts and nature is a part of that self. And so if we deny that self, we're denying a portion of who we are, therefore creating a shadow self, which is ultimately, if depending on how much we support this or deny its existence, it can morph into a whole being of its own. This is where you get things like multiple personality disorders and you have these moments where people black out. They don't remember anything. It's like another personality took over where they were in that moment. That's dangerous. This is the danger of not embracing our instincts. This is the danger of denying our instincts because ultimately the shadow self becomes the one that's driving our lives, whether we're aware of it or not. And what ends up happening is when we do this for a long time, when we repress our instincts over time for decades and decades, there is an explosion of repression from all those years of buildup, of having no release or no expression of that energy, it erupts in some form of tragedy or terrible situation. Sometimes we just blow up our entire lives. It could be destroying our family, getting divorced, cheating on our partners, destroying a company that we're working for, our career, whatever it may be. But there are a lot of ways that can go about. Uh, Chris Watts was an example that I shared describing healthy masculinity. He is not an example of ha healthy masculinity, but he's a prime example of what can happen when we don't express our animal nature, when we don't express our impulses, our urges, our truth, when we repress all that is. It culminated in this horrific act of him murdering his entire family because he had this illusion that he could somehow be free from that by killing them. That's insane. But that's what happens. That's what can happen when we repress this ancient primal energy. We have to embrace it and, and allow it to be a part of our being. And we do that by stepping into it, acknowledging it, and learning from it. 
and learning to be more comfortable in the physical while keeping ourselves conscious and aware in the moment. The beautiful thing, though, is there's a lot of wisdom in our instincts. I mean, like I was saying earlier, this is millions of years of experience collectively. So we're able to harness this power that's not even our own, but it's lived within our genes for centuries, decades, eons, potentially. And that wisdom, that those instincts exist for a reason. When you look at nature, again, nature is a great way to understand our animal side. Observe the instincts, the way the seasons change, the way animals migrate during certain times of the year, the processes that they go through to support their young, how they travel to certain areas of the globe to nurture their new children or their new generations of animals. They all know this instinctually. It's something that they do without thought. That's the power of the instincts and the animal side of us is there's all this ancient wisdom that lives within it. So when we deny that part of ourselves, we're denying that wisdom, those instincts, that intelligence that lives beyond our life, that lives beyond our experience. So we can leverage those things. The primal drives us for a reason. It ensures our survival as a species. So we have to acknowledge its existence and we have to play nice with it. We have to cooperate. The more we align our life with those energies, those movements, the more peace we'll find within ourselves and the more power we have to create the lives that we desire. And we can learn from them. We learn from the wisdom that it has to teach us. We learn from these movements, and we do that by engaging with them, by accepting them, by leaning in them. And through all of this, we find the power in our nature. We find the power in our animal side. Because when we combine that animal instincts, that animal nature with our spiritual nature, we become truly unlimited beings, ready to take on the world. Our power in this world comes from that animal instinct, but it's the spiritual side that bridges that gap that allows us to activate that power and leverage it in an intentional way, not just frivolously behaving like animals, but taking that animal instinct and applying it in a very intentional and conscious way. That's the power of conscious creation. That's the co-creative element of nature is that we are taking pieces of nature, we are applying our consciousness to it, and nature is responding to what we are putting out into the world. That's the power that we hold. That's the power that our nature, that our impulses, that our instincts have for us if we're willing to lean in and learn from them. So the, the final bit here is really the, the ideal state that we're driving towards which is the balanced human, the human that knows that he or she is both animal and spirit, that we are both energy and physical, that we are both infinite and finite, that we live in the physical and we live in the spiritual. So understanding those two worlds, understanding that we at the center of all that is the being who, who dictates and creates from that center. We leverage our animal side and our spiritual side to create the life that we desire. And we do that at the center of all that. We are the core of that expression. But when we deny aspects of ourselves, whether, whether it's our animal side or our spiritual side, we hinder that power and we weaken our ability to create and live the life that we're in the world to live. So embracing that balanced approach, Understanding that our ideal expression of humanity embraces all of that, both our spiritual and our animal side, not one or the other, but we embrace all of it because what that does is it integrates our animal side into our spiritual self. That creates this powerful combination of a human that can express the infinite power that we've been given as created beings. This is the aim we are pushing for. And don't forget that the physical world, the flesh, is a part of God's creation. We sometimes forget that this world is created, that there is intelligence underlying all of it. And so, therefore, if it was created, is it evil? Is it dark? Is it sinful? 
we can behave in those ways, but just the mere existence does not mean that life is corrupt and negative simply because it's physical. We have to understand that this is God's creation too. So by denying our animal aspects, by denying our instincts, we're in fact denying creation. We're denying our creator in a way. So understanding that there is power that comes from embracing the physical life, accepting our physical world as God's creation and realizing how beautiful that is. The world is this incredible creation here for us to learn and live and experience. What an incredible gift that is. This also opens it up for us to live deeply. Live deep. Embrace all of it. Take it all in. Live with great zest and zeal. Enjoy all that this world has to offer. The foods, the smells, the tastes, the sights, the experiences. That's an incredible thing. Living deep is what it's about. Embracing life head on. Experiencing all that life has to offer. And going head first into this experience of existence. Living deep is a beautiful and powerful place to be. But the key is is to never forget that thread. Never sever those threads to the spiritual. Because that's where we lose ourselves. When we, cons- when we get consumed by the physical world, by the animal world, which happens to a lot of us as well. Com- we completely deny our spiritual self. We get lost in the physical world. That's always been the great fear. It's always been the challenge with humanity. That's the idea of Adam and Eve. Not that they took from the tree of life and that they became sinful for that, but that they accepted their awareness of themselves and that they are living in the world as animals and spiritual beings. And it's important to not forget that spiritual side, to not completely get lost into the animal self and forget the spiritual self. It is both of those combined that creates the complete being. So if we're consumed by our spiritual self and denying the animal, we're not going to be our best self. And if we're denying our spiritual self and consumed by our animal self, we're not going to be our best self either. And a lot of pain and destruction can come from that side. So it's balancing these two forces and embracing all that is so that we can become that complete human being. To live deep in the balance of both spiritual and physical worlds. So staying connected to our spiritual selves through our Creator, through prayer, through intention, through meditation, can keep us grounded and humble to ensure that we do not lose ourselves in this world, getting lost in all the pleasure and all the... That tie to eternity is crucial to stay grounded and open and conscious. So that's all I got for today's episode. I hope you're enjoying it. I hope you've enjoyed the show. I hope you enjoy the content. I'm making a ton of progress on my WordPress site, which I'm very excited about. I'm, I'm really looking forward to having a, a tangible living blog that I can share on the internet. I'm taking all the threads that I've done on Twitter, and I will be expanding them so there will be more depth in all the content that I've created there. So there'll be a reason for you to check it out beyond just these podcasts and my Twitter account right now. So I hope you enjoy that. I certainly appreciate your support and your continued listening. So with that being said, y'all, until next time. Thank you for listening to Order Within. If you found the episode helpful, please consider sharing, rating, and subscribing. New episodes will be released every Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Until next time, y'all.